Thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. This video will explain adversarial audio synthesis, using generative adversarial networks to produce audio data rather than the heavily studied image data. This is done using the WaveGAN architecture and the SpecGAN model. The motivation is that generative modeling is taking off. It's becoming much more popular in deep learning research. This describes a set of techniques that has a data set and learns to produce new uh, samples that might belong to that data set. So in this example, in the BigGAN model, they, they have a data set of uh, dog images, and the model learns what to produce novel dogs that sort of align with the data set, but then aren't too similar to any other uh, sample. So this is really amazing, giving deep learning and artificial intelligence the power to create data. So generative adversarial networks are the most dominant way of doing this right now. And from a quick explanation of how this works, there is a generator network that learns an upsampling procedure from random noise into images. And then the discriminator learns to tell if this image belongs to the data set or it was created by the generator. And then in this way, they optimize each other until the generator is eventually able to produce images that resemble the data set. So this technique of GANs has been enormously successful with images. It originally was developed using multi-layer perceptrons from Ian Goodfellow in 2014. And then it was improved by using transposed convolutional layers by Alec Radford and others. And then it took off with things like self-attention, spectral normalization, and now we have these state-of-the-art results like the big GAN model, which uses self-attention, spectral normalization, class conditional proje projection, and tons of parameters. And we have the style GAN, which uses uh, progressive growing and uh, an interesting technique with conditional batch normalization. So transitioning to audio data, the first question that we should try to figure out is what is audio data? As data scientists, we're interested in the structure of data, how it's stored, like what are the dimensions of the matrices, vectors, tensors that store our data. So an image is represented as this height by width by channels uh, tensor, or if it's a grayscale, it could just be a matrix. So in the image matrices, each pixel takes on 256 values. It's like 8-bit uh, color. So in audio, what you have is a flat uh, time series vector that has 44,100 samples per second in audio quality, but we're not going to operate on audio quality. It's going to be about 16,000 samples per second in, uh, in this paper. So each sample has a much larger range of values as well compared to images, as you usually use the 16 bits to represent audio compared to 8 bits. And additionally, audio is very different from image data in the inherent structure of it. It's really cyclical because it really consists of a bunch of sine waves compared to images, which have like a glo global relationship, but they're not quite as, uh, you know, sequence aligned like this. Showing this further is uh, the principal components analysis when you analyze audio versus image data. So the principal components of image data usually uh, have some kind of edge features. It's, it's kind of hard to make any sense of this, but the audio principal component analysis shows these uh, cyclical patterns. You see cycles in each of the uh, principal components of the audio data. The DC GAN was an enormous step forward for applying generative adversarial networks to image data. The DC GAN is pictured here. The idea behind the DC GAN is you take your random noise input vector and you upsample it using uh, transposed convolutions. So transposed convolutions look like this. They would have uh, like a dense image like this 4x4, four four, and then they would spread it out and then convolve over this to upsample it from the height width uh, spatial resolution from 4x4 four four to 8x8 eight eight to 16x16, 16 16, 32, and then the output tar target of a 64x64 64 64 RGB image. So in WaveGAN, th this is the big idea. It's actually a really simple idea. They use a similar transposed convolution operation, but theirs is one dimensional. So they take the same thing like this is a uh, series of uh, sampled values from that uh, sine wave thing. And then, you know, compared to this, which is like a feature map or an image, they stretch it out into, you know, this kind of structure to do the upsampling convolution. So this is the overall architecture. It takes in this 100 by uh, this 256, and then D is the uh, channel parameter that they use to hyper tune their, I mean, uh, hyper parameter tune their network. So they take in the uh, random vector and then they transpose the one dimensional convolution a uh, series of times until they end up with their final target of the uh, 16,000 samples, which is, uh, which is this parameter right here. 
uh, for the target output of the audio clip. So these are some of the hyperparameters used in the WaveGAN, like their number of channels, batch size, the dimensionality parameter that controls the uh, dimensionality of the intermediate feature maps of the architectures in the generator and discriminator. Uh, and then this phase shuffle thing, which we will discuss next. And then uh, other things like they use the Wasserstein GAN, which will be covered in a future uh, video on this channel. So the authors don't describe if they use like a Bayesian optimization or if they use some kind of other technique. They just sort of give you these as a set of recommendations. So phase shuffle is one of the interesting techniques that they present in the paper. And if you have better insight of this than I do, then please share it on the comments. But the way that I interpreted it is just that uh, it's a technique to uh, regularize the discriminator so that it doesn't uh, just focus on really low level details in the generator, like having uh, a certain sine wave be off by like four frames and use that to uh, discriminate the generated and real audio samples. So the spec GAN also, it wasn't something that I was uh, that interested in, but basically spectrograms are transformations with uh, Fourier transforms into a time frequency domain. And so they're like these images that are really useful for doing like classification tasks with uh, audio and speech data, but they are difficult to invert, like convert this back to an audio sample, like a waveform without losing a ton of information. So they do present a technique in this paper to go from spectrograms back to waveforms, but I wasn't that interested in it. So this is the data set they use, speech command zero through nine. And so the generated samples from the WaveGAN are able to be classified correctly 66% of the time, showing that the WaveGAN has done a good job of capturing some of the semantics of the data set. So one of the interesting thing to think about with these samples is the dimensionality. So the samples per second uh, of the audio sample has this 16,000 uh, 16, dimensions on the vector for each data point, compared to something like MNIST, which would be 32 by 32 because it's a matrix. I mean, uh, 28 by 28, I think, is MNIST. So these are the results that they present using the inception score, showing that their phase shuffle technique significantly improves the performance compared to not using it. So this is another funny uh, results visualization they did showing that when they uh, play their bird vocalization to a cat, how it responds to the uh, different, uh, different sounds synthesized by the model. So now we're going to present the results, uh, the audio samples that they host on, the web on their website. Thank you for watching this explanation of adversarial audio synthesis and the WaveGAN architecture. Please leave any comments if you have additional insight as to how these models work and the future of audio generation in general. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and artificial intelligence videos. Thanks for watching.